uh, with my colleagues, uh, Adam Petway and others, you know, we did video analysis of Achilles tendon tears, you know, in the NBA. And, uh, you know, and that article is published, you know, as well. But, you know, we found that the average range of motion for an Achilles tendon rupture was more like 47.9 degrees, you know, during that false step maneuver. Mm. So if you look at the bell-shaped curve and we're saying 40, 35 degrees is normal, what we're right. suggesting is... 47.9 degrees where these Achilles tendons are tearing is actually two standard deviations away more compliant than what the norm is. And yeah. I think that's enlightening for people because, you know, as physical therapists, we like to make things move, right? We like to mm -hmm. mobilize it, stretch it, make it more mobile. But this is actually suggesting that if it's too flexible, it doesn't have enough innate stiffness to resist the tear. And actually it's the more mobile Achilles tendons that are actually tearing and, and not the stiff ones. Right. And these are for the uh, the population. This is for the NBA athlete. NBA, NBA athletes. And what was the uh, the pool that was studied on the on the Achilles for the 47 degrees? So, you know, for that study, you know, it was video analysis through the entire history of the NBA on anyone that we could find, you know, that had an Achilles, uh, Achilles tendon tear. Wow. Um, and then and, and, and we had, you know, video video capture on it. And I apologize, I don't have that number in, in front of me, but, okay. but we, can so, share, we can share that reference with your, uh, with your audience. Yeah. Got it. Got it. So, so for example, recently, uh, Clay Thompson, right uh, on top of my head, he had, he had a Achilles uh, fairly recently had an Achilles uh, problem rupture, mm -hmm. I think. Um, mm -hmm. And then KD also had one. Not sure. long ago, right? But but now they, you know, KD is fully recovered. He's 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 back in playing in top shape in the Olympics right now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so those are uh, some very very incredible data to to know because I'm pretty sure there are some, you know, novice PTs out there. They're still trying to if they get a Division One player, they're still trying to increase that dorsiflexion angle, you know, mm -hmm. trying to match what the average uh, number is. So mm -hmm. you, that is actually not good. Right. And that's what we're excited about with regard to the research that we were able to share, because you know, having a normative database, you know, you know, what what should we be comparing our athletes to? You can't compare them to textbook values because those relate to the general population. You would never look at a baseball player and be satisfied with 90 degrees of external rotation. You know that a pitcher is going back 140 degrees of external rotation. So if your goal is the textbook value, then you're we're, we're underserving or we're not we're not targeting the right the right goals you know, for our athletes right absolutely